So let me tell you what the basic setup for this outdoor worm bin looks like. So you can see here, I've got a tote. I recommend a decent sized tote. I think this is something like 27 or 30 gallons or something like that. And then all you need to do is you get a coupler and you make a hole that fits the size of the coupler. I won't get into the details. There's lots of instructions when you buy these couplers. I've got them on Amazon. And uh, on one end of it, you've got a hose pipe that you connect, just a little piece of hose, and make sure that it's the same size as the coupler. So yeah, I mean, you can do it this way or you can do it just the way that I did the other totes, which basically is I made a hole and I stuck a little piece of plastic to navigate it. That's good enough as well. Don't sweat it. And even though I've used these 18 gallon totes in the past, I don't recommend them. They cost me $5 at Walmart and they are extremely brittle. In about a year or so, they start to flake and chip and break and crack and um, maybe you can try something like UV spray on it to make it last longer. I haven't done that, but yeah, if you're putting something as heavy as worm castings in this, it's gonna break when you try to lift it. And I have moved those worm bins around quite a bit and experienced the cracking already. So yeah, use some pretty heavy duty totes with preferably UV protection on them. Those black totes are actually pretty good. It's very sturdy plastic and you want them to last you a while. Okay, so here I've got a bunch of leaves. I'm using this pile to make leaf mold, but I'm going to use some of it to start my worm bin. All I'm going to do is fill up this tote to about maybe half minimum. I'd say go three quarters. In fact, the other bins, when I started them, I filled them up all the way to the top because these leaves are so light, they decompose down very, very quickly. And so, you know, just fill it up as much as you can. These leaves are actually nice and wet and I've shredded them because I want the leaf mold to form faster. So I'm going to fill this up maybe about a third to a half full. Soil is already building. Okay, this looks really good. It's about a third full. And I've got some worms from my other worm bin, my outdoor worm bin. This thing is loaded with worms, as you can see. So it'll be a good quick start to this worm bin. All I'm going to do is empty it. I actually brought it with some food from the other bin as well so I don't even need to add food to this thing to get it going here. You know, people say don't add citrus, don't add garlic, don't add onions. I just add everything and the worms do their magic. So yep, no stress worm bin. Don't worry about it. Just don't put dairy and oils and meats. Anything vegetarian is a good thing for worms. And then always remember whenever you put fresh food you want to cover it with a layer of leaves because if you don't do that you're going to get fruit flies and critters and things like that that are going to try to get in here and make it even more messy than it should be so i always cover it with this and then i just put one layer of something on the top and what this will do this is actually a recycled bag in which i got alfalfa pellets and this will give that one layer of protection. Worms are very shy. They don't like to be up on the top. So this thing will give it yet another layer and that will encourage the worms to come all the way to the top. That By the way, folks, if you want to see the evolution of these two worm bins that I started about a year ago, I've got the evolution over the course of 10 months. I've made a video on that. I will post a link to it at the end of this video. And if you're getting value from this video, I sure would appreciate a big thumbs up and comment on the video, subscribe to my channel and your comments and your likes actually help it get out to a broader audience. So I sure would appreciate it. So that's it. I put the lid on and I put a brick on it. And the reason for the brick is because some of these critters are actually pretty good at opening these things. Things like raccoons and all of that. They know how to get into these if you don't close it tight enough. So this is my added layer of protection against those bigger critters that can figure it out. Um, where do you want to put it? You want to put it in a shaded part in your garden because, you know, it may get too hot where you are and you want them to stay in that comfort zone. Worms like the same kind of temperature that we humans like. So think about it. If you're too cold, your worms are probably too cold. If you're too warm, your worms are probably too 
too warm. Now they've got a little bit of extra leverage because they can dive into the soil if it gets too hot or too cold at the top. That's why you want this large surface so that if there's anything that is kind of toxic to them, including food, some foods that they don't like, they can go away. Or if your compost bin starts to heat up due to bacterial activity, you know, the worms can find another spot in the bin. So don't use those small five gallon buckets because they will give the worms very little options to escape if the environment becomes kind of toxic. So that's all there is to it. Just keep feeding them once a month, maybe twice a month, and you'll have beautiful worm castings by the end of the year. And actually you can start using it within, I'd say about three months or so, go all the way to the bottom and you can start digging up and using some castings. Mm -hmm.